tournament. Rani Rampal looking to lead her team out and getting the nod. Katie Mullen leads out the Irish. Plenty of support around the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre for the Irish. And to be fair, there is some support for India as well. But it's not quite as loud as the Irish. Now well, they're trying to make as much noise as possible, and he's flying the flag for India. And the players are out, and we will now pause for the anthems, and first the anthem of Ireland. Truly rousing anthem for the Irish, and now it's time for the national anthem of India. formalities now we turn our attention to the action it is the quarterfinal here one of these teams will go through to the semi-final and they will play Spain as we look at the lineups of both the teams first of all Ireland while well, Aisha McFerrin has been the goalkeeper of the tournament and you feel again she's gonna have to be on point tonight for Ireland defensively they've been very strong Matthew Zoe Wilson Rasheen Upton and McKay and Mullen at the back. And then in the midfield, we've got Chloe Watkins, Lizzie Colvin, and Pinder as well. Gillian Pinder, they're going to have to link up with their forward line of Nikki Evans and Anna O'Flanagan. Bit of a surprise that Deirdre Duke starts on the bench as she got their tournament off to a great start with an early goal against the USA, and they've never looked back since then, the Irish. For India, in goal is Savita. She started every game for them and has been, again, in great form. Their defensive four will be Gurjit Kaur, Grace D. Becker, Deepika and Sunita Lakra. But the midfield is where they're going to have to really perform today. Monica, Namita Topo, Navneet Kaur and Lilima Mins make the lineup there. And then up front, the young 18-year-old Laremis Siami and Rani Rampal, the experienced captain, looking to find the goals for them. Look out for Wandana wearing number 16. She too is lethal and uh, Koka is also a player to look out for for India. She's had a good tournament for them. Rina Koka wearing number six. 
Johnny Rampout. Seen it all before. Aisha McFerrin salutes the crowd. Final stretches. We're about to get underway. And it is India that start this quarter-final match. And just feel with the Irish that they should listen to the words of a former Prime Minister, which was Jack Lynch, who played hurling and Gaelic football, when he said, play every match as if it's your last, but play well enough so that it isn't. Wise words for the Irish. Can they live them out today? It's broken free inside the deep and strong defending, and it needed to be from Monica. Still alive, though, for Ireland. Into the D they go. Long corner. Oh, Ashley Morrison, long side in commentary today. Former England and Great Britain player. Mal Clulo. Mal, what a start by the Irish. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, watching Ireland play today, actually. One thing that really strikes me, you could see it when they came out the tunnel. They are having so much fun, and I think it spreads through the team. Um, they've got a great crowd that have uh, managed to fly over from Ireland, so certainly all positive signs for them at the moment. And when you're having fun, it's a lot easier, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, you know, when you think about the journey that the Irish have been on over, well, probably, what, two, four years, they've watched the men be successful, and now this is their moment to have an opportunity to really sort of make it, stake their own claim within Ireland and obviously world hockey as well. And Shord Marine has also said that he wants his team to enjoy it because they're on the edge of history. 44 years since India have made the semi-finals of a World Cup. They made it in the very first edition of the Women's World Cup. Can they do it again in 2018? On the attack now, just over the baseline, they earn their first long corner of the match. Short pass, strong challenge coming from behind from Upton. And of course, it was 110 years ago at the 1908 Olympic Games. Ireland played in the gold medal match at White City in London. They were defeated 8-1 by England and Reggie Pridmore scored four goals in that match and held the record until 1952 for the most goals in an Olympic final. Can they go all the way again, but this time with the women. It's a good ball out wide, McKay. Is it in? That's well brought down. O'Flanagan trying to get past the defender. She's won a penalty corner. Oh, no, it wasn't. I thought it was a penalty. No. I think it was the umpires conferring and changing it. O'Flanagan here. She has been, again, one of the um, bright forwards, but I think just as she spun round, she played the ball onto her left foot. I'm sure the umpire we saw, Carolina De La Fuente, point to the penalty corner. Obviously, there's Graham Short, coach of Ireland. What a ride it's been for him. Took over in July 2015, having worked with Darren Smith, who, of course, is back with New Zealand. for Udita, and captain of the India under-18s. Good work again by Navjot Court. Sunita Lakra still having a knee strap, not quite as heavily as it was the other day, so we can only presume it's on the mend. Some players know it's just psychological, isn't it, Mel? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, um, there's a lot of tape that's being used now. Sometimes it's the, you know, the mental effect that, oh, I've got that strap, so everything's going to be OK. It's been either side at the moment. He's really taken the ball by the horns. Gurdjit helps it forward. It was intercepted well, but Lillema Mins picks up, steals it back. Good tackle coming from Zoe Wilson. Ireland back with possession. Nikki Daly plays it back to Wilson. Udita fighting back, gets it back for India. They look to open it up. Sunita Lakra goes wide now. Deepika carried over halfway and just pushes it into the pass of Wandana, but too far ahead of her and it runs out of play. I think that's what's been um, really good from the Irish in this tournament is their team defence. I think when you look, look at the number of times 
the opponent has got into the uh, Irish circle. It's a ridiculous statistic, and yet they've only conceded two goals. So their team defence and Aisha McFerrin, as you mentioned at the start, has, in my opinion, been the, the best goalkeeper of this tournament so far. I have to thank Charlie Broom for these stats, but it is, in fact, 90 circle penetrations Ireland have allowed teams to have for 58 shots. There's, there's going to be a shot here, although it's blocked again. Good defence from Ireland, and in particular from Alison Mead. In comparison, India have had 96 circle penetrations against them and only allowed 41 shots. Stolen by Ireland, now a chance to break forward again. This time it's Deidre Duke giving chase, but she won't get that. Plenty of shouts for Ireland. If you look at these two teams, Mel, in terms of experience, there's not much to choose between them because Ireland collectively have 2,308 caps amongst them, India 2,009. So Ireland slightly more experienced. Yeah, it's also been a side that's been together for a, for a significant amount of time. I think they started a journey in Valencia in World League semi-finals a, a good few years ago. Tumbling into the circle, play on is the call, and India quite happily clear that away. And Wandana looks to break forward now, having to really put the afterburners on to get back and slow her progress. What she did in the end was Yvonne O'Brien, burn rather. Because Wandana is quick when she gets the chance to accelerate for India. I just feel this is where the game, I think, is going to be won or lost in the midfield with these two teams. Both, as you've said, Mal, strong defensively but it's going to be that telling pass from midfield. Yeah, I think it has. these two are definitely solid defensively. They don't have that many goals, so it's going to be a case of if you get an opportunity, as Ireland did in the group stage, they took their penalty corner exceptionally well with Anna O'Flanagan, and that, that was the difference on the day, and you can see it being something very similar today. A free hit now to Ireland, edge of the deep, taken quickly by Nikki Daly. Still in away. Good steal coming from Nikki Pradhan. India though, no worry being hemmed inside that defensive area. He goes out of play. And Matthijs gets to play that one on. Lovely little bit of skill in the midfield from Megan Fraser. Just on the edge of the D, the decision again goes the way of India, but Fraser steals it back. Determination from her. Now breaking forward is Evans. Again, a tumble inside the circle. Three hit for Ireland, just outside the deep. It's a good spell of pressure by them, and then that's lifted high on the reverse stick from Shirley McKay. Long corner. Back again to Tice, who's been involved in plenty in this opening eight minutes. She's another one, isn't she? I mean, you, could, you could go through this entire Irish team and say they've had a solid performance, but she's for me has been probably their their best defender. I think Alison Meek has been outstanding in sort of that screen position, just sat in front of the back four. One of those sort of unsung heroes that doesn't really get spoken about too often. Into the deep for India. Ireland again scrambling. It goes over the baseline harmlessly. That was great defending. Just closed down immediately. It came to Navni. It could be the quick free hits that end up undoing defences because they're not given the opportunity to set. Breaks forward. Yes, yes. Rani, but just running out of play. I did check with the Indian team how her ankle was, and they said it's come up fine. She rolled it really badly in 
India's second match was against Ireland. But like the gutsy player she is played on, Duke was coming back and trying to just pinch that one. Got a Duke caught. Turning into trouble, but as she got out of it was Dupika. Lovely skills being shown out wide by Navneet Court. Gorgeous catch. Are you okay? Do you need all this assistance? Machine up to. I think. You okay? I think it's her feet or ankle okay? or something as the cross was coming in, the ball hit it. Wait on the whistle. Right on that front foot. India have thrown bodies forward now. And Ireland with another good tackle inside the circle. And Flanagan carries forward. Oh, great skills. And still going. And the pass coming back to the creator, which was Chloe Watkins. It's a tricky ball for her to bring under control, but it's been won back by Ireland. Great break by Chloe Watkins. Haven't really seen too much of that from her in this tournament, but goes to show the what you were saying about you feel the game's going to be won in the midfield, and she's one of those that can certainly do some damage. She can. She's playing her hockey at Bloemendal in the Netherlands now, but this is a 198th game, and dare you dream that if they win this, they win the semi-final against Spain, she could play her 200th game for Ireland in the World Cup final. They've got to win this game and the next, and they'll be focused purely on this one at the moment. He's out wide now to Shirley McKay. Hey, that was again a brave challenge coming in from Ramsey Army. up to the final three minutes of the first quarter. It's been very similar to the other quarterfinals we had yesterday. It's almost as if neither team prepared to go too far forward on the attack because they're worried they might make a mistake and get caught on the counter-attack. But I think this is also the way both teams have played throughout the tournament, so are they going to come out in the quarterfinal and try and play a different brand or a different style of hockey? They played each other in the pool as well, so... They already know each other very well. Arguably, you could say, yeah, come out and play something different because they would have prepared based on what they saw in the group phases. Well, that's when I was talking to Shord Marine, the coach of India, and he was saying he felt having that extra game benefited India because you don't want to be sitting in hotel rooms not playing as Navjot Kaur breaks forward now. And of course, she gets right underneath that as she tried to play it into the D on the reverse stick. You need to play there. Is what you're used to playing in the tournament as well, isn't it? You're used to playing probably two games on, day off, game on, day off. And you know, for the teams that won the, their respective pools, some of them have had three days off, four days off. Whereas, as you say, India have managed to play already, won that game, so they know they already have the taste of knockout hockey. Whereas the Irish have, as you say, been sat around waiting. Well, they've been waiting three days, yep, exactly as you say, Mel. And of course, the interesting thing is if. India or England, they're going to have gone one day rest through to the final if they go that way. So those who played the crossover games, it'll be very interesting to see how it pans out. As Gurdjieff Court tries to get something not cleared by Ireland, a bit messy at the top of the circle. And Remsiami is giving chase, but it should be cleared quite easily by Ireland and Chloe Watkins. He hit again, taken quickly. Though, and three hits, so the connection's not quite happening at the moment for India up front. The coaching staff is preparing for the first break, brought down by McKay. Short little pass from her, finds Miku trying to help it down the line, the Limamins just getting a touch.
okay. You could see what she was trying to do. She, Deirdre Duke had started making that run towards the corner, but just wasn't quick enough. Sometimes it just needs to hold up a little bit. India, though, with one last attack, just under 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Navjot Kaur looks as if she's run down a blind alley, but manages to get the ball to Arum Siami. Good strong defending again coming from Elena Tice. the hooter goes and that is the end of the first quarter Graham Shaw quickly out of the blocks to get onto the pitch to talk to his players and they jog over towards him Jordan Marine has his players around him as well end of the first quarter it's Ireland nil India nil in this quarter-final match at the Women's Hockey World Cup It is a very hot afternoon here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. The fluids need to be taken on. Keep the old mouth guard moist as well. Now, well, what would Sean Moran be saying to his players? Well, I'm actually stood here trying to think of... Uh, I don't think either goalkeeper's had to make a save in that first quarter, so, you know, I think... I think in a quarter-final of any competition, the important thing is obviously not to concede, and they've done that in the first quarter. But he, I know he was a little bit disappointed with the way that India played the other evening. Um, obviously, they understand the enormity of, of what's ahead of them and also what they've already achieved. So I think for him, it's got to be about um, how we're going to get the goal shots on. Well, there's Adrian Locke, who is watching on, the coach of Spain. His team already through to the semi-final, and they will play the winners of this match. I'm sure he'll love the fact that it's extra hot today, and they're going to use a lot of energy in this game. I'm wondering if it's sunk in yet. Well, we're going to go pitch side now to Krista Cullen, who's with Graham Shaw. I am Graham. Uh, any surprises from the start from India that caught you guys a little off guard? No, not at all, no. Exactly how we uh, we expected, exactly what we expected. So, I thought the girls started really well, the tempo was really good. We're just trying to trying to see if we can up it again and play with a little bit more quality when we get to that final third and just give us um, yeah, just give us a few opportunities, hopefully. So the last quarter you've got in there a few, a fair few times, it's just outcome focus now? Yeah, very much. So just, you know, you said, just get that quality on that final pass and then uh, just get possession of the ball inside the circle and things can happen. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris Duran. And the round pole picks up. Yeah, she couldn't keep it in play, in fact. That's pretty much what we were saying, Mel. It's just those connections and making those passes. I'm sure it's not all nerves. It's just the fact that India aren't making it easy for them and vice versa, Ireland aren't making it easy for India. Absolutely not. I think probably as a coach, you probably enjoy, you know, you'd enjoy this game because it becomes a tactical battle as well. What can the coaches do? How can they influence what the game how can they change their tactics so that their side comes out on top Pushed out from the back and it's gone all the way down the pitch and it'll go over the baseline it's Hannah Matthews that's her father a former Ireland and British Lions back row forward for in rugby he also has the strange record of appearing on two stamps, postage stamps. Uh, the Irish fans below us are in full voice. And from the Loretto Hockey Club, and of course some of the players out on the pitch play for that club. Yep, again trying to be calm and intercepting the pass to Monica and a chance for Ireland to break forward. Duke made a really good run, but unfortunately for her, the pass was under hit by Watkins. But Chloe Watkins has really started this game well. Yeah, she has. It's just that attention to detail that, we, that Graham Shaw picked up on in that final third. For me, I think, I think 
Deirdre Duke was out on the right-hand side, Nikki Evans on the left-hand side, they just didn't do enough for me with their lead run, didn't really give um, Chloe Watkins almost like that guaranteed 100% pass. India again, looking to tie up on the back. Gurji helps it down the line, but that was easily read. Didn't click the foot there, it looked like a moment's hesitation, and somehow Megan Fraser got away with that one. And Mamins has also now just kicked it forward. This time, it is spotted. And the burn has made it down the right-hand side, but happy to go back into the defensive line and ride forward again by Tice. And off the bottom of the stick. It's a long, it's a long. The player. So another long corner to Ireland. Superb block on the edge of the deal, though the whistle has gone, but it's in India's favour now. Rani, she bangs that one forward, looking for Wandana, but I think Wandana was taken a little bit by surprise. And she's the only Indian forward up there, so even if she had trapped the ball, she had four Irish defenders to take on. Just didn't want to touch on that. It was good work being done by Udita. Grace Ecker plays it out onto the right hand side. It is a really cagey affair now as Nia Goyal plays it forward. Now Jock Court. India getting a little bit of space. Goyal now bursting forward, looking to cut infield. Maybe should have just slipped the pass. As Allen closed ranks and got the free hit. Into the shadow she goes and fires it into the feet. Ali Meek. Shadows will stretch across this pitch. Nikki Pradhan, good pass to the baseline. Into the circle it goes from India. Good clearance again. India collect with Gurjit. Baseline, Navjot Kaur collects, lays it back, near Goyal. This is better from India as well, but you know, we always comment on their, I guess, their patience in attack, but here they're just, you know, I think they probably should have transferred the ball and come back to this left-hand side and just keep shifting the Irish press from one side to the other, wait for the opp opp opportunity to open up and then go and attack. And it was the ball into Udita again, who's been showing and getting in good positions, but it just couldn't trap up the edge of the circle. Good steal again coming from Fraser. Nice turn now from Nikki Evans. And that's about the fourth time she's hit the turf during this match, and this time it will be a card, and going off is near Goyal for a couple of minutes on the side. So I think Nikki Evans has been taken out a few times. You can see, I'm not sure it was Goyal that actually did the first infringement, if I'm honest, but definitely taken one for the team there. Absolutely. It was Namita Toto who committed the initial foul and the little bump. It's called taking one for your team, isn't it? That goes out of play. There she is, Nia Goyal. It's an interesting story about Nia Goyal. Her father left her mother when she was just five years old with three daughters, and the mother worked two dog jobs, and at the age of 10, she went to the local hockey co coach and said she wanted to learn how to play. She borrowed shoes, she borrowed sticks. Here she is now playing for the national team. She won the junior national championships at the age of 13, and that's when she was spotted. But the sad side to the story is that her mum and sisters have never seen her play an international match. I've missed you these last few days, Ash. I really have. Thanks for that, Mel. I just think it would be wonderful if they could get to watch her one day on a big stage like this. Well, I think, I think to pick up on that, I think this Indian team has done 
incredibly well obviously not just to put indian hockey back on on the map but there's so much written and there's so much tv coverage around men's hockey in india that you kind of hope if they can have a successful run in, even more so in this tournament they have been successful already then it will raise the profile for them back home in india well, apparently there has been a little bit of coverage now they got to the corner finals inside the d it goes great save savita oh, the decision goes the goalkeeper's way it's across from uh, mullen i can only assume that it's hit o'flanagan on the body Good position from o'flanagan though and stolen brilliantly by ireland india with a really Oh, uncharacteristic ball out from defence. Another free hit, Watkins on the ball now. Looks for O'Flanagan, O'Flanagan turns, good block inside the deep. Well, it looked as if she was sure to get the shot on target. Gonna put your money on that one, wouldn't you? At least getting the, the stick of, to hit, make contact with the ball. Especially you know, Flanagan as well, he's again looked really dangerous throughout this tournament. She's one of those players that plays with a smile on her face, but also a steely grin at times. I think what I like about her, you know, she plays the game physically, but she gives as good as she gets. And sometimes, you know, players like to dish it out, but then think they've been hard done by or fouled when they when it's given back. She is one of several of the Irish team that have qualified in the field of law. I don't want to mess with her, in a, I know, that's in a what I was thinking. I wouldn't mind her defending me. I wouldn't want to go against her in court. She won one of the Ad Astra Elite Scholarships at the University College Dublin. Pushed out wide by Tice. Tice drops back. Turn again from Watkins. That's the free hit. Just forced the foul from Rani. And there's a chance to break forward. Unfortunately, that one just again misdirected towards O'Flanagan. I'm sure making notes. Short Marine. Giving instructions, talking to the players on the bench, making sure that they're focused as they come on. Approaching the final five minutes of the first half, are we going to see another team really test a keeper? I think if you are a goalkeeper, I'm sure you want to get a, you know a touch in any game as soon as you can. So it's going to be definitely about concentration. Savita in the Indian goal at least has had some action in front of her, but Ferran has been a, a spectator up until now. She is indeed. Well, I thought Ali Meek was off the field of play when she brought that one down. She can be as long as the ball stays in play. Uh, yeah, I agree, I know that, but it looked like from where we are, it's just below our commentary position. A pretty good view of it. That's a great pick-up taken. Well, by Navneet Kaur, good pass from her as well. Looking to just cut infield, just stopped, and it will be a free hit. And India, I think, wanting a penalty corner, saying that deliberately impeded. Rani Rampal goes on the attack again, feeds it out wide, back to Rani, just wide of the target. Lovely one, sort of one-two play here. And Rani just couldn't open the shoulders enough to, to get the ball to the far post. But Ferran watched that comfortably go wide. Stolen again by India, but one back by Ireland. Sticks go flying, looking to play on quickly is Lizzie Colvin. Here's for Irish ball. There's a free hit, be taken by Nikki Daly. It was a ball from the side, was it? Or something they're not happy with where she took the free hit from. Tice now with a little bit of space will 
Help it down the line, Mackay does the same and picked up though by Goyal. And India happy to just pass their way out of defence. Wanderna looking to go up the line, just checks back. Plays it infield. Lilima Mins comes back to Deep Grace Ecker. Deflected up the line, but the angle was wrong and it's gone out of play. Gives possession back to Ireland. Just under three minutes left in the first half. Are Ireland going to take the lead? Or can India hang on? But I think that was the right idea, trying to move the ball quickly from one side of the pitch to the other. Yes, it didn't come off, but that one touch down the line could be the way to break through the Irish defence. Well, this could be the... Oh, unfortunately, I was going to say Nicola Evans had the perfect chance then, but it just bobbled over a stick. And India have just given possession straight back to Ireland. And they've got numbers coming forward, just need to keep moving it. Comes to Colvin. Good defence again, top of the circle. And a whistle, free hit, Colvin plays on quickly. Looks to play it out wide and it went underneath the stick of Watkins. What were we saying about just making those passes stick? And it really is fine margins and that pass didn't go past Chloe Watkins by too much. Perhaps a little bit of pressure from the Indian defender put her off, but I like the fact that they tried to take the quick free hit early, recognised where the space was, somebody was prepared to run into it, quick free hit, and it almost comes off for them. Still a minute and a half left in the first half. Plenty of time for a goal. Navjot just plays it wide. Coming forward is Navni. Navni draws the foul. But she's taken the ball about a few metres further forward. Pizneki wants her to take it back. Navni just gets there in time. He's looking to feed the ball back into Deepika, but it's going to be again. Deepika was shielding the ball. That'll be an easy collect, though, for Sunita Lakra. Shirley McKay, the Irish number 10 in the back line, took a stick to the bottom of her jaw. She's holding it after that tackle. Oh, Rani, now oh, the free hit does go her way. I was going to say she could feel hard done by. Into the D she goes, but it's another strong tackle from the Irish defence, and now they look to turn defence into attack. Carried forward. And Rasheen up to... She now lets things go, and Evans will carry on as it comes back to Upton. Fraser. Who bobbled a bit, but she managed to keep it under control and a really good block to take that away from the deep. And looking to get on quickly into the circle it goes, taking a tumble. Considering going upstairs was O'Flanagan. She was looking for support from her teammates, didn't get it, so no referral. And the hooter is gone, and that is the end of the first quarter. You can see Anna O'Flanagan feeling that she was pushed, telling the umpire, why didn't I get a penalty corner? So the lawyer putting her case, the umpire waving it away. End of the first half in this quarterfinal match. It is Ireland nil, India nil. Half an hour of play to go. Who will come out on top in this quarterfinal? Both teams playing it cagey at the moment. Wood Marine saying that his players just need to play the ball to each other into space rather than just smashing it towards the circle. Pushed back, aerial pass brought down by Anna O'Flanagan. She keeps it in play. Made two challenges and then just lets the ball go to Colvin. She's dispossessed. Rani was the player doing the good work for India. Monica decides to leave it behind. Deepika. To Deep Grace Ecker. Well, these two teams, and I must thank again the Indian historian BG Joshi, because they played 24 times. India have won six. Ireland 15 times when they've met, and there have been three draws. But I should state as well that the last 10 matches, India have won four. There have been three draws, and Ireland have won three. So. Last 10 matches, India have the ascendancy. Off the leg there. 
Played the ball away after the whistle. Lucky not to get a green guard. Well, at least the corner, surely. I think. I think. It, I think the only way she's got away with that is there wasn't an Irish player anywhere near her trying to take the, the quick free hit. Smith, though, Carolina de la Fuente was very clear, don't do it again. And those passes still not happening. Ireland play on very quickly. And busy as ever, just as she was in the first half, is McKay. And the deflection goes the wrong side of the post for Ireland's fans. Just wonder what it's going to take to turn this match, Mel. It's, a, it's an interesting question and one that's pretty difficult to actually answer at the moment because there hasn't been anything in the first half that's made me think there's that weakness there or that's a weakness there. Um, I think Stuart Marai makes a valid point, which is actually the way these teams are set up. Maybe it's going to be balls into spaces, a little bit like that one that Mullen nearly got on the end of. Maybe that's going to be the difference, but is it going to be a, a special piece of skill or is it going to be an error? I feel for the player if it is an error. You remember at the end of the game against England, there was a mistake at the back that gave England that late equaliser. And the Indian player that made that mistake was in floods of tears at the end of the game. I'm not going to repeat her name because I think she doesn't deserve that. No, but I think it also shows what it would, you know, what it meant to the Indian players to be so close to the number two side in the world. Absolutely. Good intercept, though. And Ireland again, and Hannah Matthews bursting forward. Deeper cut just helped it forward. Again, the free hit goes to Ireland. So you're just not trapping quite as tidily as we're used to seeing them. Caps wide now to Watkins. Forced to go back infield by Monica. Wilson now. Right onto the right for Ireland. Goes back to Wilson again. No penalty corners yet in the match, and you wonder whether that might be a point where one team can claim the ascendancy. And over the side it goes. It's an Ireland ball. India thought it was theirs, and into the turf it goes. Quite a good deflection, though, from Mullen. I said it in the first half, but I personally feel it is going to be that quick free hit that is going to be the undoing of, of either team. I think they are so solid and set in their team defence that if you allow them to set up, they're going to be really difficult to, to break down. But if you can take a quick free hit or a self pass, you can take a couple of players out of the out of the game. Duplicate okay. over the ball. Not sure what that strong blast on the whistle was, and that's a poor trap there from Gurdjit Kaur, giving Ireland possession. And recovered well just to prevent Evans getting round the back, but Evans now trying to get past Gurdjit Kaur again, but this time the Indian defender does well. From the back, Aki Pradhan, but she's given the ball away again. It's just those mistakes India making. They're certainly creeping into the, to the Indian game at the start of this third quarter. The question I guess we're going to ask ourselves is, can Ireland capitalise on these mistakes? Tice goes wide. Matthews on the reverse stick, blocked easily at the edge of the deep. Help forward. Wonderland looking to deflect it forward so she could run onto it, but well read by Colvin. in play, that was determination from Udita, she finds Wandana, Wandana just again looks to just knock it past, and it looks to me like Ireland have done their homework on there, because twice now the covering player has reacted the minute she's knocked it past and looked to run onto it. We're so often used to seeing Indian players, whether male or female, comfortable running with the ball and cover defence, double teaming is going to be important. Matthews 
Down the line it goes again. It's easily intercepted by Dupica. Goes infield. Good steal again coming this time from Fraser. But at the top of the circle, Deep Raisenko wins it back again for India. I tell you, if Megan Fraser had looked up at that moment in time, I think Anaro Flanagan had peeled off to the left-hand side and the top of the circle opened up nicely for her. But I don't think she looked. I think she was so tuned in to making that pass to O'Flanagan that it was perfectly read by the Indian defence. And the ball boy just colliding down here with Ali Meek. She does apologise. Oh, There's actually, sorry, ball girl. Got a mixture on the ball patrol of boys and girls. That's a good take on the reverse stick. And a chance for Navjot Court. Gives it to Nikki Prada. A little bit slow though, evades a Flanagan. Bouncing ball into the deep. Again, watched all the way onto the stick and it needed to beat. Good defensive play from Zoe Wilson. And the Coca now is wide on the right. Not a good pass to Goyal. Forced to go back to Wilson. India high press, trying to force them into the corner. Goyal working hard. Meek trying to dribble out. Almost took it over the side. Into to the player penalised. Wilson lifts it over the top. That's brought down this time by Nicola Daly. Daly trying to weave one way, then the other. Deep Grace Ecker just getting a stick on that. Meek, though, steals it back for Arlen. And Deep Grace Ecker will be penalised. Meek plays off. That's a good tackle on the edge of the circle coming from Sunita Lakra. She clears the danger. And here come India now on the attack. Not many bodies forward, but Wandana gets the chance to run. She's asking for the player in front of her, which is a Captain Rani, to just make a run for it. She's asking us to do something. It was bold, telling the captain what to do. It was, quite, it was a very quick counter attack by by India, though, and you, I think for me that's where the I have the questions as to whether the midfield and forwards can actually get up high. I think when Ireland, when they get isolated up front, there's so much willingness from the midfield to get up there and support the ball carrier. We've gone past the halfway stage of the third quarter. Still no goals as yet. And at the moment, Savita is really the only one of the keepers that's been called into action. Daly trying to weave a little bit of magic for Ireland down the left-hand side. Gets onto the reverse stick, brought down, and in the end, controlled. And the meter top up. And a good, strong challenge by Udita. Manages to find Rani. Rani is surrounded by green shirts, looks to advance and snapping at her heels with Tice. Managed to get it over the side, Rani drills that one in, stolen by Udite, top of the deal. She then goes and steps on the ball as she was turning to try and hit it on the reverse stick. She stepped on it. Thought we were going to get a goal shot then. So did I. And here come Ireland again, Daly is wide. Good intercept again from the Mita Topo, uh, Sunita Lakram rather. Rani trying to steal it, Tice again, strong in the challenge. Over the side it goes. And neither team has had a shot so far in the second half. It's all been pretty much around the edges of the circle. Ireland going to manage to manufacture one now. All played out wide, but never going to get on the end of that pass. Ireland's turn to, to be making a few basic skill errors. Saw that at the start of this quarter from India. Well, this may well be a chance. There's good work at the top of the circle now. Trying to find a way in is Pinder. Gets a free hit. Fans trying to get in unison, some sort of cheer going. Tice again slides it into the D, appeals for a foot. 
And penalised is Nicola Evans. I just wonder now, the quarter-final, both these teams, Ireland have never been in this position. As I mentioned, India playing for a semi-final spot for the first time in 44 years. And you do wonder whether some of this is just the enormity of the situation is getting to them. It may, I mean, it's, it's a valid question, and it may well be, but I'd, I'd like to think once the game is underway, you forget almost what round you're playing. You're you're so focused on the magic work processes, and but what the coach has sent you out to do, the tactics that they've set up, that that should be your focus. How do we? How are we going to deliver the game plan that the coach has set out, rather than we're playing for a place in the semi-final? I do want to give some of the coaches a thesaurus so they stop using the word process and maybe find a different word for all those interviews. I don't think they will, though. I think it's a buzzword that has many connotations behind it. Each team will have their own way of dealing with that. Good work by O'Flanagan. She made a good run into the circle, but it was intercepted again by Sunita Lacra. And the free hit goes the way of Ireland once more. We're in the final three minutes of the third quarter. Into the circle it goes. Deep Grace Ecker had to get there. O'Flanagan was about to release the shot. The safety catch was off. Certainly the work rate of Anna O'Flanagan. She's really working tirelessly. And you do feel that if a chance comes her way, she's the most likely. Given away again, breaking forward now. Pinder just slipping again. India, well, they don't get it out. They should have done. Meek over the ball now for Ireland. And an obstruction given against me. I think that's being blown quite a lot in this tournament, is players using their body to stop another player from, from getting the ball. So it's the body that's obstructing rather than there being a stick obstruction. Then ask, doesn't that happen almost every shooting? Yep. We won't enter a debate on that one now. Wilson plays it forward for Ireland. And Sheen Upton. Good pass from her. Finds Chloe Watkins in space. Watkins cuts infield, moved towards the D. Good block initially from Marina. And it's hit the foot just outside the D. Ireland wanted the penalty corner. The ball must go the five metres. I'm not sure that that actually did as it was played into the deep. India eventually scramble it clear, but it'll be still picked up by Ireland, and Watkins goes back across the pitch. Approaching the final minute of the third quarter, trying to spin and play that one in. Just losing it was Lizzie Colvin. Now India get the chance to break forward. Nani Rampal was making a good run, but in the end, having to go the other way is Navneet Kaur. Rampal, or Rani as she's better known, is in the middle of the deep. Lanaram Siami takes a tumble. The ball is cleared only as far as India again. Looking for Rani at the back post. Well intercepted by Ireland. Carried out of defence now by Rasheen Upton. She's given it away again. Lanaram Siami didn't get that. That was a good defensive touch coming from Lizzie Colvin. Just took it away from her. Cleared over the side. India looking to just lay a sucker punch if they can at the end of this third quarter. Need to get the ball inside the circle quickly. In it goes. Good touch though. And Zoe Wilson taken into the corner and that may well be the last action, although it's stolen by Rani. Rani advances towards the deep. Gets a free hit just outside the circle. Wants the ball quickly from the ball patrol. Into the circle it goes, and just couldn't turn it. Hits the foot of Laura Misami. And that is the end of the third quarter. Graham Shaw not out of the box quite as quickly, but you can see he's trying to get his players around and hurry up, hurry up, come on. I want to talk to you. I've got my last speech for this quarter ready and raring to go. Ireland nil, India nil. 15 minutes to go after this break. Are we going to find a winner from either of these teams? A very warm day here in London. Plenty of support for the Green Army. Can 
their fairy tale continue. players all around him. Just a reminder, the winner of this match will play Spain in the semi-final. Ireland, second lowest ranked team in the tournament. Only Italy were ranked lower than them. They've done fantastically well, just the one loss against England. They managed to top pool beat. Both the coaches have had their final say. Can Anna O'Flanagan find the goal that Ireland need, or will it be India? Wandana, she knows how to score. Udita, as captain the under-18s, is the leader within the team despite her years. Just 20 years of age. Will be Ireland to push back. Wilson throws it to the air out wide. It's been brought down well. And Flanagan's at the back post, flicked into the D, but there was nobody that close. It was very easy for India to defend and carry out. It was a great ball into space, and Mullen showing the change of speed around that outside but it, how many times have we seen Indians picking off those bouncing balls into the circle good defense again coming from Watkins Jock cool though finds a foot Who comes forward now Lilima Mins trying to go on the reverse stick great block again from Elena Tice. Good interception again from Ireland and coming back. And so Flanagan to win that ball and free hit has been reversed. Apologies from the umpire. So Flanagan having made a run forward now has to get back and help out the defence. I think that was good umpiring because Carolina de la Fuente was not going to let India take that until O'Flanagan had had an opportunity to get back into a defensive position. And I agree as Daly breaks forward now for Ireland, but very quick to get back and goal side was Deepika. Daly looks to play on, having won the free hit. Shaped to pass back, then goes on a run herself, but just lost control and made it easy for Deepika to take possession back for India. just up the line and unfortunately good football skills from Monica but not allowed in this game good play by Wandana oh, we headed for a shootout comes out to Wilson you might remember, Mel, in uh, the playoff for fifth and sixth at the Hockey World League semi-finals last year. These two did meet, played a one-all draw, and it was a shootout. And Ireland won that one 4-3. You've got to say, if you were a betting person, you'd say at this particular moment in time, it does look like it's got a shootout written all over it, but with 12 minutes to go, someone like... Cano did yesterday for Spain, can put their name in the history books for their country. Good run again from Anna O'Flanagan. Just for the record on that game, 13 players from India were involved in that match. 11 from, uh, sorry, 13 from uh, Ireland and 16 from, 13 from India, 16 from Ireland. Sorry, I'll get it right eventually. So plenty of experience in that match here for Ireland. Run forward again from Rani into the circle. It goes. McFerrin. Will it be a penalty corner? We're going to have an umpire referral here. He said team referral. Yeah. Foot. Certainly in real time, it looked like it hit the foot. I think it was a miss trap by Matthews, and there I think it's a miss trap up onto her leg. 
Marine Delforge from Belgium is our video umpire who played her white wall, umpired her 100th game last night. So whether it hit, I think it's hit the arm or the leg off a missed trap from Matthews onto it. That angle's definitely not going to show it. Comes off off the arm. I think it should be a corner myself. Here comes the decision. Carolina, I have a decision for you. Uh, it hits a body of Ireland coming from her own stick, so you can award a penalty corner and they keep the referral. So it was an India referral and it is an India penalty corner. A good referral by them. Now, can they convert the penalty corner? Rani waits at the top of the circle alongside her. Gurjit Kaur. Gurjit will have Namita Topo stopping for her. Monica will stop for Rani. I think it's gone. Comes to Rani, takes a touch, hits it, saved well by McFerrin logging. And then Tice does really well to then clear it off McFerrin. Particularly coming in from the stick, so she was on the stick side of McFerrin. Not the greatest of, well, I was going to say not the greatest of traps, but I actually think she probably played that deliberately. Rani now trying to weave her way in at the top of the circle. Earns her team another free hit. Ball comes back to her. She looked to self pass. And on the reverse stick, desperate defending again. And really good defending coming from Shirley McKay. Shirley McKay who beat Nikki Simmons' record for the most appearances for Ireland. Nikki Simmons, whose birthday it is today. Works now for the FIH, so we wish her a very happy birthday. Matthews goes back to Wilson. Just over 10 minutes left in this quarter-final match. That was just thrown away by Wilson. Rani will get to that. I didn't think she would. Now Wondana into the circle. She goes rather heavy touch from her. Made it easy for Arna to clear. In front of the keeper, it's going to break free. And again, it's good defence from Ireland in the end. They play on quickly. McFerrin can breathe a sigh of relief. O'Flanagan in space for Ireland. Looks to take on Gurdjit Kaur. O'Flanagan goes past the defender, across the face it comes, but... She looks full of running, Anna O'Flanagan, I have to say. I know they get rests and they get to come off, but her recovery rate seems to be exceptional. But that all came from Hannah, Hannah Matthews' position in the Irish circle. Making a trap with an arc with an Indian forward closing in on her. Well, it is worth mentioning the fitness, it's one of the things that Ireland have worked so hard on. They've been training early mornings with the ice hockey coach Colin Shields. That was before they went over to the Hockey World League last year. Early starts with him. And it is something they've really made the sacrifices to get their fitness levels higher. As it's carried forward again by Namita Topo. A soft pass, but luckily it's been picked up. And Aram Siami looked to play it forward into the deep. Good defense again from Tice. And what's more, a really good pass that picks out Nikki Evans. Evans now, sorry, it wasn't Evans, my apologies, it was Mullen who now finds Evans. And that is superb from Deep Grace Ecker. It's a long corner now. Pinder. Upton gets past one. Matthews switches play over to the right-hand side, and unfortunately, it goes out of play. And here come India again. Navni. Navni manages to spin away from Matthews. 
and lips to go back the other side. She's done very well and plays it to the top of the circle. There was nobody there, though, for Ireland. I mean, India, rather. Suddenly the game's opened up a little bit, hasn't it? Whether fatigue rates are starting to kick in or not, I'm not sure. We've seen more, certainly, counter-attacking from Ireland. India still, for me, look to be better in possession, more assured. Still, neither team can break the deadlock in this match. Irish fans find their voice again. We hit to India. Sunita Lakra comes out wide to Deepika. The whole defence shifts across. Deepika helps it down the line. Goyal, good pass from her to Rani. Rani looking to go round the back, gets past one defender. Rani somehow still has possession and then is penalised for shooting the ball again, using her body. Well, as long as you weren't backing in, as long as you're moving the ball and sticking the ball and it's always in contact, how is that shielding? If you're not backing into someone, I get that, but as you said, in a shootout, everybody does that. Well, Remy Siami releases the ball, but Navni left it behind. And so now, Ireland get the chance to go on the attack. Short pass, finds Pinder. Pinder looks up, needs to play it out wide, and that was misdirected. And she's shouting at Daly, but Daly was in space. I think Ireland needs to do one more lateral pass. Ali Meek in the last two Irish attacks has really pulled out wide onto the sideline, and she's just being ignored, and the Irish players are trying to go through the numbers of the Indian team. Wandana hits the ground. She's gone for a referral. She wants a referral. She feels she was fouled. I saw, but for me, it's nothing, OK? You jump. Okay, Lauren, yes, she I saw the dive. push, but I was so little. Okay. I'll have a look. Well, there's the shoulder in the back. No way, no way. Exactly. She was warned, wasn't she? She said she saw it. I saw it, didn't think it was anything. Are you sure? Yeah. No, I think that was just one of those referrals where you just let the emotion take over. And Rani, I'm sure, will not be happy about that, nor the coaching staff. Because you just wonder whether they're going to need it later in the game. Scoring pass was always going to be a danger. Good work was done by Evans to cut that one off. And again, a mistake. This time coming from Gurdjieff Court. She recovered in the end. And it's good pressure again from Ireland. A lovely turn just to get that away. Now Jock Court. Pressured all the way by Lizzie Colvin. Ireland get it. Now they do get it eventually, but again. India win it back, Sunita Lakra. Over the side it goes, though, so Ireland get the chance to play on. Mullen drives it in. Long corner to Ireland. We're in the final five minutes of this quarter-final. Ball popped into the air. Ireland have yet to have a shot on Savita's goal in the second half. Are they going to get one in this last four and a half minutes? What if they miss trap like that? A burn. Looked up to the skies. Near Goyal feeds it back to Udita. Pass down the line. Wandana needs to do well. Goyal plays it in. Good defence again, though, from Ireland. Trying to turn is the experienced Mackay. And she gets the free hit. And say we're going into a shootout, Mel. I have that feeling. We've had goals scored with 0.4 seconds on the clock, so I'm not going to go down that road until the final buzzer goes. We have indeed, you're absolutely right. Wilson evades the first challenge and manages to get the ball out wide. Three hit goes the way of Ireland. Chance to play on there for Rasheen Upton. 
And what is a card being issued for? Udita getting a green card. That's two minutes on the side. So India will be down to ten players. And on the next two minutes, a minute and a half, they will have back to the full quota. And the line it goes. India. That's their free hit. I didn't actually work out what she'd done wrong. I'll be honest with you, I didn't see it. Must have been in it, you know, something around the ball, whether it's knocking it away, not move with, you know, retreating the five metres. Well, she was certainly standing more than five metres back. Yeah, must have been something as the free hit was taken then. Both coaches watching on from the side. I wonder how their heart rates are. In it comes Fraser. And put under pressure, lovely little pass behind it. Wilson. Rani will look to close down. And we're collecting defence. Nikki Pradhan helps it down the line. Monica gives away the free hit. Monica, a wonderful tackle to get possession back for India. So making her way over now is Nikki Pradhan. India will look to eat up the clock if they can while they're a player down. And they're usually very good at doing that by just keeping possession. They just played over the side. Oh, in fact, it's free hit, one by. Rani ramp up. She gets. Uh, well, in fact, she doesn't get the free hit this time. She did kick it away, and then realised she better play the ball back. Oh, that is unusual. You don't see that every day. Sunita Lakra taking it on the thigh. And Flanagan runs out of space. Long corner. Ireland have got players there straight away, looking to play on. Matthews wanted to get on with it quickly. Wilson plays it wide down the line. Shirley McKay. Two Indian players trying to stop her. And the free hit goes Ireland's way. Well, that wasn't quite where the foul happened, but play on. And now she's done for shielding the ball. Trying to work out with a minute left on the clock who I'd rather have on the ball in that situation. It's Chloe Watkins, who'd gone on the baseline. At an attacking midfielder with individual skills, and no disrespect to Shirley McKay, she has been outstanding in this tournament. But I'd much rather have a skillful midfielder on it than a defender. Well, here is Shirley McKay, plays it forward. Ireland, have they got time for one last attack? We're in the final 40 seconds. Good steal again from Rani Rampal, drilled towards the D it was. India looking to go on the attack. There's only Rani over the halfway line. Ball played towards her by Navni, given to Zoe Wilson, and it was just deflected off Namita Topo's stick. Oh, Flanagan takes a tumble. India come forward. Now it's Monica. Monica has a wise head on her shoulders. Wandana plays it into the deep. Good defence again, this time from Matthews, and she's absolutely smashed it into Monica. Clock stops at 3.4 seconds. Come on. Got to say, initially by Matthews, it looked like a simple trap, but actually, with not many you know, seconds left on the clock, she would have had to have concentrated on that more than anything, because she gave away the only corner of the game anyway. Well, Arnand just dribble it back into the corner, and we are headed for a shootout. No goals in this match, no real clear-cut opportunities at either end. So, you can't really say that either team deserved to steal a victory in this match. They just negated each other. And that is why we finished with a score, Ireland nil, India nil.
demonstrated so many times. Okay, girls? Sven! I want to hear you one more. I want to hear you. Come on, Linda. Thanks very much, Chris. Well, Savita takes her place under the crossbar. It is indeed Ireland to go first. Savita was in goal in that shootout. So too was McFerrin at the Hockey World League last year. And first up for Ireland is Nikki Daly. Daly, who was under doubt for this tournament with a stress fracture in her foot. There's a hush around the stadium, the whistle goes. Daly heads off to the right, cuts back almost onto a backhand, then goes onto the forehand. Savita's gone down, took a touch. Good work by the Indian goalkeeper. No goal for Ireland. So Nikki Daly comes, comes in too close to the goal. I mean, how many times have we seen the goalkeeper just with a big forehand? I mean, like it's a swinging stick, and if it doesn't actually take the ball, then it's probably going to be a stroke. But there's just not enough being done by the person taking the, the, the shootout at this precise moment. Aisha McFerrin taking her time to get in the goal and having to be hurried up. I think she's just making Rani think that little bit longer. Rani, the captain of India, lines up again. Silence around the stadium. The whistle goes. Rani goes straight down the middle. McFerrin comes out just short of the penalty spot. Rani shoots. It goes off the keeper's body. McFerrin saves, no goals each after the first run. So Rani comes in, McFerrin gets herself to the penalty spot, big left hand onto the post in the end. When your luck's in, your luck's in, and McFerrin certainly deserves that. Fantastic save. And now it's Anna O'Flanagan. Just a reminder, five shots per team, and then it goes to sudden death. O'Flanagan almost went before the whistle. Savita comes out. O'Flanagan goes on the backhand, then opens up onto the forehand. Savita hasn't committed, but she did then. And a call for, well, she wanted the referral, but I think a penalty stroke has been awarded. Well, India are going to refer that.
Your thoughts on this, Mel? I thought it looked clean to the naked eye. Anna O'Flanagan was... She was immediate, though, wasn't she? Immediate. So is it stick, then ball, or ball, then stick? <laughs> and then is it back stick? That's the other oh, question. Oh, goodness. That looks to me like that the looks edge of the stick. Yeah, I think that bit's OK. I think it's clean, but it's so difficult to tell in that particular situation. Does she come through the back of the stick to then knock the ball away? Here comes the decision. Carolina, the tackle was clean, so for me, it's just a nothing. So? So they just keep their full and Ireland don't score. OK. So there is no penalty stroke. And Ireland barrel, okay? do not get the penalty stroke. Savita has done her job again. Anna Flanagan not happy. She missed in the playoff in Brussels last year. Now to come forward is Monica for India. Again, McFerrin takes her time. She's gone right off to one side of the goal. Maybe to try and force Monica to go that way. Monica does, in fact, go that way. Goes to the backhand, will look to open up. Then goes back on the backhand. McFerrin, time is running out. And just ran out of time and pushed it wide. And Monica has missed as well. We're still level at nil-nil. Something you see Maddie Hinch do quite a bit is changing where she runs out from the goal to, to really keep the, the, the striker guessing. But really good to stay up on her toes. Didn't commit to anything, didn't, didn't go, you know, flying in, trying to make a save. She just stayed up, stayed big, and made Monica make the decision. And the Irish all grouped together. Savita again. This time it's Rasheen Upton. Can she break the deadlock? The whistle goes. She accelerates into the circle. Savita again only comes as far as the penalty spot. That was a stick check, and it's gone in, and Ireland have the first goal. Rasheen Upton stayed calm and buried it into the backboard. Ireland won, India nil. As you say, Ashley, really calm. I thought there she shaped to, to throw an area, and I'd love to have seen that. Sneaks it in that just past the post. Inches, doesn't matter. Irish goal. Gets a glove on it, Savita, so she's unlucky there. So now India would really want to score this one to pull level. It falls to Navjot. Navjot who fractured her shin back in 2012. She was inspired by the 2012 Commonwealth Games with gold medal winning team to take up hockey. She sets off into the circle. McFerrin came, then retreats. Navjot, it's saved by McFerrin. There was no power in the shot. And McFerrin, though, did brilliantly just to deflect it wide. Aisha McFerrin, the hero again for Ireland. Look at her bouncing around. She's on her toes, keeps her eye on the ball, drops down to the knees when she has to. Nearly sneaks it under. Irrelevant. Ali Meek steps up for Ireland next. So Meek now with a chance to stretch Ireland's lead. Savita just stopped short of the penalty spot. Pushed it through. What a finish by Ali Meek. That was superb. And he really enjoyed it. That is insane by Ali Meek. That's incredible. That was oh, audacious. My goodness. Absolutely love this from Ali Meek. Look at that little chuck. Cheeky, I like it. Savita goes, where's it gone? What a finish. So now, stepping forward for India is Rina Kokar. Got Rina to score. Got has to score. the pressure, she has to score. McFerrin. Rina spins, she does score. So now it falls down to the last one for Ireland. And if they score this, they are through to the semi-final. Great. Under pressure just to 
block McFerrin a little bit, get the ball into the hook of the stick, and then just to spin and release. But Chloe Watkins, this is to put your team in the semi-finals. It is indeed Chloe Watkins. Can she do it? Savita has to save for India to keep their dream alive. Watkins straight down the barrel she goes. Savita moving on her toes, forces her one way. She's going to score it. Ireland are in the semi-final of the World Cup. The second lowest ranked team, the Green Army celebrators won. What a fairy tale, and it continues. Well, there is going to be a referral. I think this is just a last roll of the dice. Graham Shaw continues to celebrate. It is fantastic scenes here in London. You feel for India, but Ireland have done it. They top their pool, and now they've got through the quarter-final and are in the semi-final of the World Cup. Who would have believed it? Well, Shirley McKay had to ask for extra leave from her boss after they got in the quarter-finals. She's going to have to ask for extended leave now. Graham Shaw cannot believe it. There's tears of joy. Well, Chloe Watkins, what a performance. And now, Clula, we're going to have to get your thoughts on your vitality player of the match. Listen, I think Aisha McFerrin was outstanding in that shootout, and I'm probably going to get slated for not giving it to her again. But for me, that final um, shootout from Chloe Watkins, she was outstanding for Ireland all day. She was the midfielder that broke through the entire time. So for me, Chloe Watkins is the is the player of the match. Well, sadness for India. Tears on the bench. They were on the brink of history. Hadn't been in the semi-final for 44 years, but I'm sure those fans are still proud of the players and the achievement of the Indian Eves. But today it was Ireland's day. Today it was the Green Army's day. Ireland continue their march towards the final. When you think these girls pay to play hockey, it is remarkable what they've achieved, and it just shows how they've banded together as a team, how they've worked together so hard, and it's paying rewards. What a quarter-final we've witnessed. It is Ireland nil, India nil, but in the shootout, Ireland victorious. Three goals to one. They march on to the semi-final. Well, here is confirmation. Ireland will play Spain on Saturday in the first semi-final. Australia, well, who will they play? We'll have to find out after the next game. And that is coming up shortly. It is the Netherlands versus England. Whoever wins that will meet Australia. Uh, we're going to go pitch side to Krista Cullen, who is no doubt with one of the smiling Irish. I absolutely am. Chloe, talk me through what was going through your mind, because you had that opportunity to win it for Ireland, and now I can't wipe the smile off your face. <laughs> I mean, we just we knew we had the best keeper in the game at these. We knew she was going to keep making saves, had all faith in her, and, you know, it just she just kept blocking, blocking, and it came down to it, and we practiced them, and I just knew what I was going to do. And, Thankfully, it came off. And the game itself, sort of, there wasn't much to choose between the two of you. No, yeah, it ended up being a very tight game. Um, it was still quite hot out there, but India played really well. All credit to them. They've really had a great tournament. Um, but we just stuck at it and uh, came down to 1v1s. We were confident. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the semis. Thank you very much. 